say too, if you're visiting with us tonight, thank you for coming. I believe if you come one time, you'll come back again. Not because of me, but because of the presence of God that our people have in their lives. In the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse, we've been in, been preaching in Galatians, I don't know, two, three, four months. It's been a while, but we won't get ended up in it tonight. And Paul writes to Galatia for a particular reason, because they was trying, a group of Jews had come down, they was trying to tell them, if you want to get saved, you've got to get circumcised. And all that means is they're trying to take them back under the law. But when Jesus got on the cross and died and shed his blood, buried and resurrected the third day, the, the law was gone and we came into grace. By grace are you saved through faith it is a gift of God, not a works list any man should boast. Book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, I mean sixth chapter tonight. I want us to look back at the 25th and 26th verse of the fifth chapter. And then we'll go right into the sixth. If we live in the Spirit, I told you last week to underline that in your Bible, and I'm going to check you and see if you did. If you live in the Spirit, what did I say that was? Keep in step. Keep in step. As the Spirit leads, you can't lag behind. If God says go, you've got to go. That's what it means to walk in the Spirit, to keep step. When you're young in the Lord, you're like a baby, physically. You take little baby steps. And as you grow and you lay, get longer, you take longer steps. And then when you become a full adult, man, you walk a little faster and your strides further. When you get to be an old man, you take them old man steps. <laughs> Go back to shuffling like you did when you was little. I hadn't got back to my shuffle yet. I hope I don't. But, that's what he's talking about. We that are saved, we that have been born again, live in the Spirit, to keep step in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. It makes no difference what God asks you to do. Do it. And I'm not going to be jealous of you. If God gives you the greatest singing voice in the world and I can't sing a note, I'm not going to be jealous of you. If you can out-preach, out-teach, out-sing everybody, out-give financially everybody, I am not going to be jealous of you. Remember why he saved you is to be like Jesus. If you sing the best you can, you teach the best you can, you witness the best you can, that's all God requires of you. Give it your fully, wholly, truly best. So that's what he's telling the church at Galatia. Don't let these people tell you you've got to be circumcised and live under the law to be saved. Because it is Jesus and his blood and his death, burial, and resurrection that saves you. Plus nothing, minus nothing. Grace, grace, grace. Don't provoke one another. That's what these Jews were doing. They were trying to provoke the, the church in Galatia by saying, we've been circumcised and you haven't been circumcised. We're more spiritual than you. You're less spiritual than us. So don't provoke people to envy one another. Sixth chapter, like the first word, Brethren. Now, who's our brother and sister? Born again. Believer. Born again. Brethren. Now, so he's talking to the church. If, that's a big word, a man be overtaken in a fault. If a man be overtaken in a fault. I want you to underline the word fault. And I want you to write out beside of it, sin. If a man is caught up in sin, sin overtakes him. 
you see that person do sin, that does a sin, and that is caught up in sin, how are we supposed to treat it? Now remember it says, brethren, we as born again believers, how are we supposed to treat somebody that does sin? Well, first thing, what is my best friend's phone number? Come on. I can hardly wait to tell them because I knew they were going to mess up sooner or later. What do you think? I, I could tell something was going on by the way that they wasn't coming to church regularly. I could tell something was going on because they just couldn't look me in the eye. I could tell something was going on because I, they just didn't sing in the invitation. I could tell something was wrong with them because I know they needed to have gone to the altar Sunday when, when Brother Glenn was preaching. If a brother being overtaken in a fault, what are we supposed to do? Ye which are spiritual. Now, yeah, that's good. Well, I'm spiritual because, oh, how I love you. <laughs> that makes me spiritual. I'm spiritual because I have perfect attendance. That makes us spiritual. I'm spiritual because I've read all the Bible. <coughs> that doesn't have a thing to do with spirituality. Spiritual person is number one, he's born again of the Spirit of God. Number two, he's paid up, prayed up, lived up, loves God with all his heart, mind, body, and soul, and is not interested in coming under the influence of the world. But now listen to me. Listen carefully. We are human beings. No matter how long we live, we're still going to be human beings. We will never get to the place in our lives that the devil does not tempt and try us. Right. Never. I am as susceptible to sin as you are. We all are in that same place. <coughs> so he says, what makes us spiritual? Reading the Bible, <coughs> praying, living a godly life, attending so that we can hear the Word of God and be influenced by the Word of God, be taught the Word of God, and then that's when you begin to grow in the grace of God. You ever take a little kid and just feed him milk all of his life till he's 20 years old? He won't be big as a nubbin. You that don't know what a nubbin is, that's, that's a... <laughs> Corn on a cob in the field that it got ready to grow, but it just didn't grow. Little bitty old thing. I know. <coughs> Always when I eat corn, I like the big, full eared corn. One of them that you get a hold of with both hands. Y'all don't know how to shell corn, do you? Shell it with your teeth. So it says spirituality, spirituality, that you need your spirit. So now we've got two, three things. We've got brethren, Christians. If you see somebody that sins, then we that are spiritual, you that are spiritual, that are lived up, paid up, read up, preached up, ready. The next word I want you to underline says restore. Restore. Now to restore something, it means that something has been taken away. <coughs> <clears throat> and so he says you need to get that and bring it back and put it back where it was. How do we restore somebody that we know that sins and stays in that sin and doesn't do anything about it? How do we restore that person? <coughs> 
Can I take and pray that his sins be forgiven? Yes, I can. But God won't forgive his sins upon my merits. See, we're free, moral agents, and we've all got to give an account to God individually. So if you sin, and I see you sin, the first thing I need to do is examine myself to see if my heart is in tune with God. And make sure that my heart's in tune with God. Second thing I need to do, I need to say, God, use me to send me to that person that I might sit down with them in a place of love and humility and get that person restored, get him back to where he was before he sinned. You want to say amen? It's all right. I'm, I'm not... I'm used to it. Been accustomed to it for a long time. So, three things, brother, the church, sin, spiritual, fourth thing, restore. Restore such a one in the spirit. Now, you can't put him back into the position that he was in. All you are is a messenger. All you are, you're going in the love of God, making sure that you're not eat up with sin and doing the same things that he's doing. But it says the spirit of meekness. I've had people to come to me in my lifetime when I've been down and not doing things right, not living right. And the first thing they wanted to say to me, now I know what you've been doing. And you know that it's not right and what you need to do is get out and call on God and ask God to forgive you. If you don't, you're just going to get worse shape. Well, the first thing that I've done is just kind of raise up in the flesh and say, let me tell you what, right there's a door. <laughs> and <laughs> somebody hit that lick. Yeah. That's not meekness. Anytime that you know within your heart you're not superior, you're subject to doing the same thing that fellow's doing too. So we need to go in humility and go in tears. Go with a broken heart. Man, that's your brother. That's your sister. You love them. They got into something they don't need to be into, but now God's going to use you to go over there and restore them and get them out of that and bring them back. Now, how's that going to be done? If your heart is right and you're in meekness, making sure there's not sin dwelling in your life, you're going over there in meekness to restore. Now, this next part is really good. Considering uh-oh, when you consider something, you got to think about it. Considering who? Thyself. I thought I, that guy sinned. I thought that guy did wrong. And now I'm going to go over and straighten him out. He said, uh-huh. you got to take a look at yourself before you go over there. Now, that's a horse of a different color. Now let's talk about sin for just a minute. Now we think if we're not giving anybody a cussing and if we're not going out here doing dope and if we're not going out here laying drunk and if we're not running around with somebody else's husband or wife we're alright. Is that the only sins? I'm going to get in your pocket now. There are sins that we commit by consent, by openly doing. Now, if I go out here today and grab my gun, and I got me one. I don't know where it's at, but I got one. If somebody broke in on me and had to tell them, wait a minute, let me find my gun. <laughs> and I shot somebody and killed them. 
That's sin. I know that's sin. But what if I meet somebody coming out of the dollar store and we stand outside by their car and we carry on a conversation and we talk about, boy, it's a beautiful day. I don't think it's going to rain today. I hope it don't get too hot. Man, wasn't yesterday a pretty day? You ever talk like that? Mm -hmm. Carrying on that conversation. All it was, you know they're lost. You know that they're backslidden. You know they're not doing the things that they once did in God. <coughs> and you don't say a word yeah. to them. <coughs> and you say, well, come see me sometime. I got news for you. Ready? That's sin. Right. There's a sin of commission. That's the ones that you commit openly. And then there are sins of omission. Those things that we know to do and we won't do. Right. Now he said, if you see a brother been all taken a fog, you were spiritual to go in such a one and restore him into the meekness of the Spirit, considering thyself. So there's a bunch of examination I gotta do. I may not be out here doing obvious sins, but what are the things that I've omitted to do in my life? All right, listen. We're going to get you now. Hadn't got you yet. I know that this is the Word of God. I know that. No doubt. But I'm too tired. I'm too busy. I don't have time. I can't understand it. It's just full of these thous and don'ts. Because you've omitted, you've pushed aside something to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. We ain't looking too good right now, are we? <laughs> I'm not standing too tall now. In fact, I've just cut the legs out from under me. In fact, I'm finding out I'm not near as spiritual as I thought I was. My spirituality is not too high. So he said, you need to take a look at yourself before you go over to straighten somebody else out that you see that's doing wrong. What about you? Boy, we're on a different playing field now. I finally, after, after getting saved in years of, of preaching, I finally could see what he was talking about. I won't stand up here and point my finger at you and criticize and downgrade you. I will stand here and preach the Bible and let God speak to all of us. I'm at the head of the line. Let God speak to me. Let Him expose me to me. You don't need me to expose you to you. You need to let God expose you to you. You know what that's called? Conviction. Right. So before we start trying to... <clears throat> I can, somebody old said this when I was a kid. You better clean up under your own doorstep before you come sweeping under mine. That wasn't original. I didn't think of that. Somebody years ago did. So that's just true. We need, we need to take care of ourselves. Is all that Paul is saying. Considering thyself, least thy also be <coughs> tempted. Least thy also be tempted. Now whatever that person, man, woman is, that you see something wrong in their life and they're not, they're not, they've lost their joy, they lost their peace, they lost their happiness. You can tell that they're just down. They're not coming to church. They're not reading their Bible. And they try to, if they see it, they'll try to pull an exit stage left. Don't say, well, that's the way they want to be, they can just be that way. That's the way they are. They come a while and then stay out a while. Come a while and stay out a while. It's that way. 
it's talking about. No! It's talking about we ought to love one another enough to care for one another, to help one another. That's what he's talking about. Have two girls. I'll guarantee you when 12 o'clock came and they wasn't in the door, Pop was in the car a looking. You got one coming, Robert. <laughs> It'll happen. Pray God that it don't, but that it happened to me. Whew. Why was I like that? I was there happy. Why was I like that? Because I loved him. Why was I like that? Because I knew the dangers that was out there. Why? If we care about the people that aren't coming, it takes more than saying I love you. See you next Sunday. It takes caring enough to go see them. Go to them. Don't be critical. Pray for them. Say, is there anything that I've done to offend you? Is there anything that, that I've hurt your feelings about? Well, I'm not going to do that. Well, I wonder who you serve. God said do it. When they was crucifying Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So he said, consider thyself, least also be tempted. The same thing you're going over to that old boy to talk to him about, you better take hold of it because tomorrow you might be facing the same thing. And if you think in that fashion, it will cause a little humility in your life. I used to say things like, I'll never do that. God help me. I ended up doing that and more. I said, well, the God gave us the girls. If they do that, I'll do this. They did that, and I don't know what I did. But I didn't, you know, you can't control anybody. You can't control yourself. You can through God. You can through the Spirit. You can through the power of God. All right, we wore that one verse out. I want you to look at James 4 and 14. James 4 and 14. It says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. That's good stuff. Every one of us, in our minds, we have a place that we can go to to desire things that we don't need. So a man is tempted by the devil when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed to do wrong. If you stay there long enough, it's going to get harder on you. And if you stay there long enough, you're going to end up doing it. That's a good place to holler. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Why do I know? Because I've done it. And I've been there. How do you know? You're in the same boat with me. Right. We're just going the same direction. But we need to help each other. Second verse. He's going to tell us why that we ought to go to that brother. He's going to tell us why that we need to restore it. Second verse, bear ye one another's burdens. If you got one, well, maybe not at this moment, but if you haven't, just live a little bit longer and you will have one. Bear ye. Now, if I'm watching you, and you've got a hundred pound sack on your shoulder. And I can see you that you're bending lower and I can see your legs begin to wobble. What do I do? Good to see you. Have a nice day. <laughs> if I'm driving down the road and I see you standing out with a hood up on your car, Beep, beep. <laughs> if I 
see your child standing in front of the ice cream store drooling at the mouth. And I know that you don't have the money. What should I do? Go get me a triple dip and say, y'all come over here and talk to me a while. <laughs> Is that what I should do? Oh. Man, I'm a heathen, but I ain't that much of a heathen. <laughs> Bear ye one another's burden. I need to go buy every one of you an ice cream cone, and if I don't have the money to buy an ice cream cone, I need to walk you down from, from the ice cream parlor so you won't have to be looking at it and drooling at the mouth. Let me love you. Even though I can't work on your car and fix it, I can stop and pick you up and give you a ride somewhere where it can get fixed. I may not be able to lift a hundred pounds, but if I can take 50 of it and you can take 50 of it, then I can help you bear your burden. Bear you one another's burdens. Now what law is that? And it says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now what law of Christ is that? What law is he talking about? Thy neighbor. Neighbor as thyself and so fulfill the law of Christ. All right. Now we're down to the good stuff. Love. <coughs> I've been guilty of this in my life. Man, I sure love you. Boy, I got that over with. That's not what he's talking about. If you love like Jesus loves, when you see somebody that is down and out spiritually, physically, that'll be that burden on your heart and you are lifted. You are lifted. Let me show you how God works. I'll never call anybody's name. But this was a blessing. We had a family in dire need. Didn't nobody know it. So I was doing all I could in order to try to help. And all at once there was a family that came to our house. Got ready to leave and said, we want to give this to you. Said, this is to you. $500. You do with it however, whenever, whatever. made a call that night. The next day, I took that money and took it to those people. And I said, a gift from God. Yeah, but Glenn, that is your money. Uh-uh. I've been talking to God. Because I didn't have what it took in order to meet that need. So God said, all right, I'm going to give you a blessing. And they came and gave the blessing. They got blessed. I got blessed. They got blessed. Everybody got blessed. Amen. Amen. Bear you other those burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I thought for sure we'd get nine or ten verses done. But that's, that's as far as we're going to get to it. This is good stuff, people. Oh, this, this is a thing that will make you grow. You, if you take it, you'll never be the same again. It will move you and shake your foundation. And I've been tore up all week. God has just been so good. God has been so good to me. Of His gracious love. Okay.